Good morning, sir. Good morning, may I know you? My name is Dr. Parker, I'm the new house officer assigned to your unit. Okay, you are welcome. We actually have a patient for surgery today. I know about the patient, sir, the 60 years old Mr. Wilson, who is to undergo surgery for his benign prostatic hyperplasia. Great, that is nice. So what can you tell me about the preoperative preparations for elective surgeries? The preoperative preparations for elective surgeries are made up of the following components. Review of the history of the patient to make sure the diagnosis before surgery. Review of the past medical history nothing the following. 1. Associated conditions like diabetes mellitus, asthma, hypertension, chest diseases, heart diseases, myopathies, etc. which may affect affect the conduct of anesthesia and surgery. 2. Previous operations and anesthetic experience. 3. Previous experience with blood transfusion. 4. Drug therapy. Other components of preoperative preparations for elective surgeries include review of patient's social habits, examination of the surgical pathology to take final decision on the operative procedure to adopt and finally, routine examination of all systems. Good. So what is the minimum investigations required before anesthesia and surgery? The minimum investigations include 1. Hemoglobin, full blood count, packed cell volume and sickling test. 2. Urine for albumin and sugar. 3. Stool for amoeba and worms. For patients aged 40 years and above, you in addition to the already mentioned investigations, you also do the following. 1. Chest x-ray, as they are more prone to chronic obstructive airway disease and cardiomegaly. 2. Electrocardiogram, as they are more prone to cardiac disease. 3. Fasting blood sugar, as they are more prone to type 2 diabetes. Very good. Please continue with remaining components of preoperative preparations for elective surgeries. The final component will be getting an informed consent from the patient after explaining the details of the surgery to the patient. You must be an intelligent young man, good, very good. I will be doing a retropubic simple prostatectomy for the patient. Are you conversant with the surgical procedure? Yes. Good, so go and get consent from Mr. Wilson, he's currently in the male medical ward. Okay sir, good morning Mr. Wilson, my name is Dr. Parker. I have been sent by Dr. Walter to tell you about the surgery you are to undergo today and get an informed consent from you. We plan to do a simple retropubic prostatectomy. In this surgery, Dr. Walter will make an opening in the lower part of your abdomen in order to remove the enlarged prostrate causing you problems. Are there any possible complications? Yes. One can develop post-surgical bleeding urinary tract infections, wound infections and erectile dysfunction. But do not worry so much, Dr. Walter is a very experienced surgeon, your surgery will be successful without any complications. If you are okay for us to proceed with the surgery, I would like you to sign a consent form for me. Okay Dr. Parker, I will sign the forms. Good morning Mr. Wilson. Good morning Dr. Walter. I hope you are ready for the surgery today. Yes Doctor. But I'm a little bit scared. Don't worry so much, the surgery will be a successful one. Good afternoon Dr. Erica. Good afternoon Dr. Parker. I heard you have been posted to Dr. Walter's unit. Yes, I actually started working with Dr. Walter's unit today. Aren't you guys meant to be in the theater? I thought your unit had patients to operate on today. Yes, Dr. Walter has already started with the surgery. I had to attend to an emergency case we had in the ward. I will be going to the theater now to meet up with Dr. Walter, although I suspect he might be done with the surgery. Okay, have a nice day. Thanks. Good afternoon, Dr. Walter. Good afternoon, Dr. Packer. What happened? You've spent so much time, I am already done with the surgery. I'm sorry I wasted so much time, the situation in the ward was very serious, but it has been resolved. Okay, you now have to follow up on Mr. Wilson in the ward. No problems, sir. But before you leave, are you familiar with the ward round protocols for a post-operative case? Yes, sir. Okay, tell me what you know about it. The ward round protocol for post-operative case involves the following. Stating the surgeries done in number of days post-operative. Review of observation chart or graph. Review of drug chart. Review of fluid chart. Review of nurses reports. Review of presenting symptoms or signs. 
Review of previous investigations done. Review of operation findings. Analysis of fresh complaints. Examination of the patient which includes a general exam. Examination of the affected systems and other systems. Special examination of the operative site and assess for post-operative complications. Stating of the present assessment of the patient condition. And finally, writing a management plan. Very impressive. If you are asked to discuss post-operative complications, how will you go about it? I will start by saying that post-operative complications are conditions occurring within 30 days of operation or after 30 days, but is directly related to the operation. It can be divided into three phases which includes 1. Complications of the first few hours which includes Respiratory insufficiency, cardiovascular emergencies and nervous system problems. 2. Complications after 24 hours which includes things like pulmonary embolism, secondary hemorrhage, acute renal failure, peritonitis, delirium, hematoma and etc. 3. Late complications which includes incisional hernia, mechanical intestinal obstruction from adhesion following intra-abdominal surgeries, and hypertrophic scar and keloid formation. Very very good, Dr. Parker, I'm impressed. Thank you very much, sir. To follow up on other medical cases and health-related talks, please click on the subscribe button on the right and the like button on the left.